Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be focusing on the new sniper rifle available in the They Shall Not Pass DLC, currently usable in the Battlefield 1 CTE. This is the LaBelle Model 1886 rifle. Now this is a weapon that I think a lot of people were expecting to see in the French DLC, a very iconic French rifle from World War I, and it's an interesting rifle. Based on the stats alone, I thought it was going to be a bit more usable than I currently think it is. And there's some interesting stats that I think hold this rifle back and we'll get into that in a bit. Now on its surface, the LaBelle is a good medium to long range sniper rifle. It has high powered magnification scopes going all the way up to 10 times magnification if you wish. I'm using it with an eight times magnification right now. It's got that cool side mounted scope as you can see, which is actually something that I think you would have to have had during the war simply because the bolt on this rifle uh, swings all the way up to a vertical position before you pull it back. Despite that somewhat weird design, you won't really notice that too much in game and the rifle itself still manages to shoot at a pretty decent rate of fire, 56 rounds per minute. This is on par with the Russian 1895 sniper rifle and it also shoots a little bit faster than the SMLE Mark III, which is 52 rounds per minute. The LaBelle can hold eight rounds in its tube style magazine. The problem of course with the tube style magazine is that you can't use stripper clips to load the rifle faster. So you're gonna individually load each shot into this rifle. There's pros and cons to this system. Of course, if I'm using the SMLE Mark III, which has a 10 round magazine, I can load five rounds through a stripper clip really quickly if I would like, or load all 10 rounds through two stripper clips. So you do have faster reload options with some of the other rifles out there. The benefit, of course, to this system is that you can interrupt the reload at any point and you will still have that many rounds in your rifle. But if I were reloading a clip on a different sniper rifle and I interrupted that reload and then come back to the weapon, it's not gonna have those bullets in the gun. My main gripe with this rifle is something called the post reload delay. Now, a lot of sniper rifles have this in Battlefield 1, but the delay period really isn't that significant or something that really affects the performance of this weapon. But the LaBelle 1886 has an incredibly long post reload delay. You have to remember a lot of these bolt action rifles were really old. I think the 1886 was originally designed without the current bolt action system, which was later modified to the weapon in 1893. So I guess there's sort of um, some design flaws there for whatever reason. It has a post reload delay of like two and a half seconds, which is way, way longer than any other sniper rifle in the game. And it means that regardless of how many shots you're reloading, at the end of that reload, you're gonna have to uh, go through the post reload delay, which is two and a half seconds. It's faster, I think anyway, it's faster switching to your sidearm and then back to your primary weapon once you see that there's a, a full magazine in the weapon, because the post reload delay is so long, you can just switch to your sidearm and back to your primary, and you don't have to go through that delay. So you can kind of like cheat the system a little bit, but it doesn't really make up for the fact that this really delays your reload in game, no matter how many bullets you want to load. It's, but even if you're just topping off like an extra bullet or an extra few bullets uh, in between combat, it's going to delay you significantly. Now, if you like using the K-Bullet, which I think you should like using the K-Bullet as it allows you to really deal some good damage to aircraft as they fly by and mess up lightly armored vehicles or even just help take down tanks, the K-Bullet is a great addition to the Scout class. Um, when you're loading a K-Bullet, you have to go through that post-reload delay every single time. So that's two and a half seconds added on to the normal reload time of a K-Bullet. And that's absolutely insane. It has the longest K-Bullet reload time of any gun in in the game, that's including the Martini Henry. So that's a major performance hit to this weapon. I know reload shouldn't really be the most important factor when talking about a sniper rifle's balance, but the sad thing about the LaBelle 1886 is that it doesn't have a lot going for it that makes makes up for the incredibly slow reload time. Now it's got an interesting damage sweet spot, which is slightly different than the other rifles out there, but not particularly interesting. Its sweet spot range is a little bit further than the SMLE Mark III and a little bit less than the Russian 1895. Right in between the two, it starts at 50 meters out and ends at just about 90 meters. So it's just 10 meters further than the SMLE and 10 meters shorter than the 1895. Now. That's not a bad sweet spot range by any means, but it's not something that's super unique 
or interesting compared to the other weapons available. And in my opinion, really doesn't make up for the reload problems of this weapon. Now, it also has a magnified scope, which means you're gonna get scope glint. If you like the SMLE, you're not getting scope glint with that sniper rifle. If you like the Russian 1895, then it's kind of the same camp right there. The bullet velocity is 720 meters per second, which means it's actually slower than both the SMLE and Russian 1895, which means hitting moving targets and targets at further ranges is going to be more difficult. If you have a slower muzzle velocity, those range shots instantly become harder compared to say the Gewehr 98, which has an 880 meter per second muzzle velocity. It is far easier to hit headshots and moving targets with that rifle compared to this one. Is it impossible with this one? No. Can you get used to this one? Absolutely. It's a matter of practice and time but it doesn't mean that it's going to be easier. It means it's going to be harder. Now, when taking any new weapon into Battlefield 1, it's important to compare it to another weapon that is as close to it in performance as you can get and look at the pros and cons. And for that, I would absolutely pick the Russian 1895. The sweet spots are very similar. They have similar scope uh, options. If you like the higher magnification scopes, the Russian 1895 offers that. But beyond that, the two weapons are pretty different, and I think the Russian 1895 offers pretty much benefits in just about any other department. The one thing that the Lebel has over the Russian 1895, aside from a slightly closer range sweet spot, is three more bullets in its magazine, which I don't think make up for the incredibly long reload time. Plus, the Russian 1895 has a strip reload option where you can reload all five rounds in a strip clip, which is way faster, and the Labelle doesn't have that as an option either. The Russian 1895 also has a 820 meter per second bullet velocity, which is 100 meters per second faster than the Labelle and makes a huge difference when hitting ranged and moving targets. So sadly, I just don't think there's enough incentive to pick this weapon over the Russian 1895 or if you want something for a little bit closer range, the SMLE Mark III. Both of those weapons I think offer vastly superior performance to this one uh, overall. And rather than leave you guys with a weapon review that I think just says, hey, this gun's not particularly great compared to what's already in the game, so you may as well not bother, um, I like to provide suggestions uh, aimed at DICE for trying to balance out this weapon a little bit better. And I always encourage you guys to add your suggestions too, because there's many different ways to balance out a gun to try and make it more effective, and picking the right one uh, does make a pretty big difference in how that weapon will feel. But one thing that I think could make this gun a little bit more competitive and something uh, that would be more appealing to me personally is increasing the sweet spot radius. Now most sniper rifles in the game have a 40 meter radius. That means the damage starts um, at say 40 meters out for the SMLE and then ends at 80 meters. That's where you can get that 100% body shot damage radius. And pretty much all the sniper rifles in the game, or most of them in the game, have a 40 meter radius. Increasing the radius on this weapon would make it a more attractive gun. So currently the Labelle's radius starts at about 50 meters out and ends at about 90 meters. I think if they push that 90 meters out to 100 meters to be somewhat on par with the Russian 1895, would give it a larger radius than the other sniper rifles in the game, which would be a more interesting and compelling reason to use this weapon. Because I've already stated that the actual bullet performance of this weapon just isn't as good as the other ones out there. The other ones have bullets that travel faster uh, and reload quicker. So why use this one? The slightly larger eight round magazine capacity compared to the Russian 1895's five round magazine capacity isn't enough reason to pick this weapon instead. So increasing that sweet spot radius is a really interesting and compelling reason to use it instead. You're making up for the weapon's generally poor performance when trying to actually be accurate and hit your shots and reload quickly and making up for it with a larger sweet spot radius. So yeah, it's going to be harder to hit your shots, but you have a more forgiving sweet spot radius. And that would actually make me consider using this weapon over the other ones in the game. It's a, it's a much more interesting trade-off. Anyway, remember this is CTE. We do have a little bit of time before the official DLC launches, though I think a lot of these stats will probably be final at the launch, but there's always time for DICE to go back in and start changing some 
numbers and testing some things out. I would certainly appreciate a more balanced out sniper rifle that's more compelling and interesting to use, and I hope DICE takes my suggestion. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your suggestions down below if you have a different idea on how to balance out this sniper rifle or what you think about it. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.